welcome to today's what I eat in a day. I am currently on my way to boot camp. It's a little earlier today. Uh, Julia, our boot camp instructor, texted me last night while I was asleep, but I got it this morning and asked if I could come a little bit early because we have some new people joining boot camp, which is always exciting. And we always do measurements with the new people. We she takes our measurements once a month, but when someone new joins, we do their initial measurements. So I think she wants me to come early to help her with that while she does the measuring. I write it down usually that's the case and it's funny because she knows I'm so consistent that she knows I'll be there Monday Wednesday Friday so she usually messages me to help her with things like this knowing that I'm consistently there which I guess says a lot that I do show up consistently I have lots of updates for you today I think I'm going to clean my eyeshadow brushes so we'll sit down clean brushes I'll give you all of the updates I have updates on Lola on Troy I want to update you on my 5k that I did this last weekend uh, there's quite a few things that I want to share with you so we'll sit down and do some updates a little bit later today I have a copycat Panda Express recipe for dinner tonight let me get my workout in this morning I'll go home get ready for the day and then we will have some breakfast Good morning again from me and my breakfast. This has been my go-to breakfast for the last few days. I'm loving it. It's extremely low calorie, high protein, delicious. So you saw that I made an omelet. Let me actually show you the veggie mixture that I put in here. I really love it. It's something I'm going to add as a staple to my grocery list. And then I have some sliced up strawberry, mixed up my creatine, which I will start sipping on with breakfast. But let me quickly show you the veggie mixture in my omelet. So this is what I'm using. This is from Trader Joe's. It's the garden vegetable hash. It's cauliflower, zucchini, bell pepper, fire roast, corn, celery, and onion, and it's cut up, ready to go. So I just saute up some of this at the beginning of the week, and then I have it, it to add to my omelet. And it's just really helping me get in some extra vegetables. It adds some texture, some crunch, some flavor to the omelet. So I've really been liking this. I mean, you could make this on your own as well, but I like that it's cut up and ready to go. My omelet, again, is just egg whites, whatever meat or protein you want to use. Today I used turkey and then a slice of cheese delicious. I'll put all the points, calories, information here on the screen for you for breakfast. Do you want to play? Get your baby. Yeah, get it. Show mommy. Oh, yes, go, go. Show mommy. Oh, yeah. Go, 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 go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're so vicious. Oh, here comes your brother. I hear him. Here he comes. Oh, there he is. Get him, Lola. Get him, Lola. Yeah, get him. Get Palmer. Get him. <laughs> yeah, get him. Get him. Yay. Oh, what? What do you need? You need stuff? Palmer, your face is right. You're tired. Who needs a treat? Do you want a treat? Let's get treats. A treat? One treat? Palmer, treat? Okay, come on. When they want a treat, we do a treat. We've got some duck jerky. Babacito, there's a buff. Ooh, yeah, duck jerky. Your turn, Nug. Jerky, good job. My package just came. One of my packages that I'm getting today just showed up. This is my Chival's humidifier. I have wanted a humidifier 
for our bedroom for so long. I am so excited when I go grocery shopping this week to buy some aromatherapy because you can put aromatherapy oil in this humidifier so that you can have this amazing scent along with the benefits of the humidifier. I'm thinking I'm going to get a lavender essential oil. I can have that going before bed. I bought my humidifier right off of Amazon. So I thought we could set it up together, get it going, get it ready. Ooh, here's what it looks like. This is really, really nice. It's actually packaged really well. So it says, do not add water or essential oils into the tube, only add water into the reservoir. Oh, there's some more tape in here. All right. So this is the reservoir for the water. Comes with a little brush too to clean the back. In the back, that little drawer comes out with a little filter and that's where your aromatherapy oil will go. So that's where I'm going to put my lavender oil after I grab it at the store this week. And that actually just sits right in the back of the humidifier. The Cheval's humidifier actually has a six liter large water tank. It can run up for 50 hours on a single tank. It is recommended to use distilled water and purified water for better health results. The red light indicator will let you know when it's time to refill the water and will automatically stop misting when the water level drops too low. This is a two-in-one humidifier and diffuser. It adds moisture to even the largest rooms and helps relieve congestion, coughs, and dry skin. And again, you can add any of your essential oils to the dedicated oil tank tank and adjust the nozzle of the humidifier for the bedroom to aim the mist and scent where you need it most. Like I said, it's perfect for the bedroom, which is where we're going to keep ours. I love the soft blue nightlight. It can be turned on and off. And it comes with a cleaning brush to help make it easy to scrub every corner of the humidifier. You do want to clean it about every two to three weeks to extend its life. This is going to be absolutely perfect to keep the air nice and crisp and hydrated during the night. Definitely a good place to put a humidifier is in your bedroom, in a space that you spend a lot of time with. This is the perfect size. I'm so excited to get the essential oil to add to it. I love that feature. And don't forget, you can pick this up right off of Amazon. I will link it down below for you. Discount codes, all of the information, but definitely check it out. Such a great investment. I just got off of a coaching call and it is time for my second coffee of the day. So I'm making my favorite blended coffee. This is a Starbucks Frappuccino dupe with 35 grams of protein. I love this combination. Three things, super, super simple. And then I'm actually going to have a couple of these Alyssa's oatmeal bites. These are just little oatmeal cookie things. They're really good. 90 calories, fiber, protein. I love this paired with my coffee. It's like the perfect combination. So for my coffee, I use my cold brew and I use Drag Up right now. I have Goose's Marshmallow Cold Brew. I always say Drag Up is the only cold brew that I like. I think the rest of them taste bitter and disgusting, but I love, love, love Drag Up. And then I just make it in my cold brew pitcher. Super simple, much more affordable than buying pre-made cold brew and just way better quality in general. All of the Drag Up flavors are amazing. So I just brew it in this pitcher. I have a discount for Drag Up and my pitcher is right off of Amazon. So I'll link those for you. And then I do one scoop or one one packet of Clean Simple Eats Protein, whatever flavor you want. I've been liking this marshmallow coconut mocha combo. So I'm going to do one packet or one scoop of coconut cream from Clean Simple Eats. I also have a discount for Clean Simple Eats. I'll link that. And then I am doing two scoops of my Herbalife Nutrition High Protein Iced Coffee in mocha. This whole combo right here is so good. It tastes like a coconut mocha. It's absolutely delicious. This is 100 calories. 15 grams of protein for two scoops. So I will show you exactly how I put my blended coffee together. So I add my cold brew. You can do as much or as little as you want. I usually put, I don't know, two inches, three inches of cold brew at the bottom of my blender cup. And then I add my packet of protein powder or your scoop of protein powder. And then my two scoops of Herbalife iced protein coffee. And then I add my ice and blend it up. Look at how good this looks. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I always add just a little bit of whipped cream. So good, coconut mocha. Any of the Clean Simple Eats protein powders are amazing. Perfect snack with my Alyssa's cookies. Almost 40 grams of protein total between the cookies and the blended protein coffee. 
So we're gonna clean my makeup brushes and I'm going to give you lots of updates. So here are all of my dirty eye brushes that need cleaned. This is the cleaner that I use from Cinema Secrets. I've used this forever. It literally is the best makeup brush cleaner. I use it mainly for my eye brushes. I wash my sponges and my face brushes with Irish Spring Soap that actually works really good to clean them. But for eye brushes, this is my favorite. It dries immediately. So as soon as you're done cleaning your brushes, you can use them. And I just find that it's really easy, quick, and it gets them nice and clean. And you can see we have a lot to clean today. So I'll link Cinema Secrets for you. I just buy it right off of Sephora. So I just put my brush cleaner in this little container right here and it works perfect to clean my brushes. And then it's so simple, literally you just dip your brush in and then I wipe it on a towel and it's clean. And literally it's immediately dry so you can use it right away. This really is the best brush cleaner. So you're not going to be able to see me clean my brushes because I'm going to give you updates, but I will, if I get through all my updates before we get all the brushes clean, I'll drop you down so you can see actually how I clean them. But I literally dip it in the cleaner, wipe it on a towel. Right, so let's jump into updates. So I want to update you on Troy, on Lola, on Brenda, my coach, and on my 5K that I ran on Saturday. So let's start with the 5K. That way I can insert some pictures here for you as well. But I did the Meet Me Downtown Tucson 5K on Saturday night. Now the 5K did not start until 7 p.m. And if you know me, that is extremely late. I usually am asleep by 7.30. I mean, I eat dinner around 4, 4.30. I'm in bed relaxing with Lola around 6. So that is a really late start time for me. I had gotten up at 4 a.m. that morning because that's just my normal time to get up. So I took a little nap in the afternoon. Thank goodness about a half an hour, 45 minutes. I don't think I would have made it without the nap. But I did the 5K with my friend Mel, who I go to boot camp with. We've done several 5Ks together. If you see all my pictures, she's typically in them. She She's a big runner, and she's kind of my, my 5K running buddy. So the run started at 7 p.m. At the time that the run started, it was 100 degrees. So at like 6.45 or so, it was 100 degrees out. And when the run actually started, it was a balmy 98. And when we finished, it was a balmy 96. So it was warm. And that's why they do it at night so that it's a little bit cooler. We just have really hot weather right now for the beginning of June. We're already well into the hundreds pretty much all the time. So it was hot and I was tired. I noticed that it was a little harder for me to do the run. I 100% finished the run. No problem. Actually had a really good time for the run, but I was tired. And I think just the heat and having to breathe in the heat was a lot. And then after the run, we had hot dogs from a local food truck. It was really fun. I was pretty hungry, actually, after the run was over. I hung out with a few of Mel's friends who have kind of become my friends from her local running group. And Randall, the guy that you see in the pictures, is such a nice guy. He's single and Mel's single, so I'm trying to connect those two up. But he is a very nice guy. And he hung out with us after, had dinner with us. We visited, took pictures. It was really fun. And then they walked me back to my car. The parking garage that I was in was a few blocks away from the run and it was dark and they didn't want me to have to walk back to the parking garage by myself. So Mel and Randall walked me back, which was really nice. And then once I got into the parking garage, I was on the second level and there's three levels total of this garage. It was just wall to wall cars. Everybody trying to get out from the run and then it was in downtown Tucson. So people trying to leave downtown in general. It took me 40 minutes to get out of the parking garage. Nobody even wanted to let me back out of my parking spot. And finally, some nice lady let me out of my parking spot. And then I just sat there. Sat there as everybody shuffled out of the parking garage, paid at the end. It was a long night. I didn't get home until after 10 and then washed my face, brushed my teeth, did my skincare. By the time I got to bed, it was 10.30 and I couldn't sleep. I think I was just kind of wound up from the run. It was a long night. So I don't think I fell asleep till maybe 11.30 and I was up at 4.30. My body just, it doesn't matter what time I go to bed. I was actually telling Mel and Randall at the run, I said, watch, I'll be up at 4 a.m. tomorrow even though I'm going to bed late and 4.30, wide awake. So I got up, started my day. So it's been, so it was, it was a little, a little tiring Sunday. Did my meal prep, kind of geared up for the week and then really just spent the majority of the afternoon relaxing with Lola because 
I was pretty tired from that run, but that is the last run that I'll be doing until September. We typically don't have runs during the summer here. It's just too hot, even first thing in the morning. I think there's one more run, a four mile run uh, in a couple weeks. I'm not doing that one, but I think that pretty much rounds out all of the runs for the summer here. That, but as always, I'm proud of myself for finishing the run, even in the heat and being so late at night, at least late for me. So that was a big win. And I'm looking forward to a little bit of a break and then right back into the runs in September. I actually have a run schedule September, October, November, and December. So I'll be back to my five and 10 Ks once the summer is over. And then quick update on Lola. So Lola is doing really, really well. Like I mentioned, I think it was in a What I Eat in a Day, it may have been a weigh-in video. She's been having a little bit harder time with this second round of chemo. I just think it's hard on her body. She's already been through a full round. I just think she's getting older. Number one, she's a year older than she was when she did the first round. And she's an older dog in general. She's a rescue, so I'm not 100% sure of her age, but I would say she's at least 11 and a half, maybe getting close to 12 kind of basing that on Diesel's age as well. I think that's about where she falls and she's just having a little bit harder time. I find that she is a little bit more nauseous and sick a little bit longer after her treatment and she's definitely had more diarrhea, like pretty bad diarrhea after most of her treatments. Her blood work and everything looks really good. She's had a couple of weeks where her white blood cells were too low for her to have treatment and that's probably because of the diarrhea is causing her white blood cells to be low. I think she's had a couple of weeks weeks of that. And basically what happens is it just pushes the treatment out another week. So I let her oncologist know last week that, you know, she was having quite a bit of diarrhea. She's just, she's really not eating her kibble. I've been making her chicken and rice because she's just not eating her kibble. She's kind of finicky with treats, which Lola loves food. So for her to be finicky with treats is a sign to me that maybe she's nauseous. I've been giving her anti-nausea medicine twice a day. It's just it's, I think it's just a lot more this time around for her. So I talked to it over with her oncologist last week and we may go to every other week of chemo rather than every week for the second half. She's actually just about ready to enter the second half of this round of chemo. So I think that's something I want to pursue more and talk to her more when Lola goes back. Actually gets two weeks off right now. So she did not have chemo yesterday. So she... She will not have chemo tomorrow or yesterday when you see this video, so that's good. I think she just needs a little bit of a break. A lot of you have also asked why she still goes to chemo if she's in remission, because if she stops chemo, the cancer will come back. So she actually has to finish the entire four rounds of chemo. So it ends up being five to six months. Now, if she goes every other week, it just prolongs that even more. So finishing around in four weeks, it'll actually take her eight weeks. So I just, I don't know what the implications are of going every other week. So that's just more of a conversation that I'm going to have with her oncologist when she goes in next Tuesday. And again, I'll update you guys in another video, but I'm just grateful every single day that she's still here with us and that she's happy and she's healthy overall. And if I have to make her chicken and rice from here on out, I'll make her chicken and rice. And the other good thing is, is she's not losing all the weight that she lost last time. She lost 13 pounds from the time she was diagnosed to finishing up chemo, which is a lot for a dog that weighs, you know, in the fifties. It's a big amount. That's a big percentage of their weight. And this time her weight has remained pretty stable. So I'm grateful for that as well. And we'll just see what we decide ultimately as far as how often she goes in. But like I said, I'll definitely update you in another video. And then a quick update on Troy. So I mentioned quite a while ago, I mean, it's been a couple months because if you know social security, similar to the IRS, they do not move very fast. But we have some updates on Troy's social security disability. He finally got his letter that says that he officially has social security disability. It gave us the amount of his monthly payment was in the payment processing center where basically, where basically someone has to go enter it in a computer for three months. So that's how long it took for them to enter it into a computer was three months, but we finally got the official letter. The problem now is that in the approval letter or the, I think they call it the award letter, the disability award letter, it showed that Troy was disabled as of November, 2023, which is exactly five months before they had proved his disability. And social security has a five month waiting period. 
that's convenient. So basically they said that he became disabled November of 2023 so that he doesn't receive any back pay. So technically we should be getting back pay from when we applied for social security, which was February of 2020. Two. So right before we moved to Arizona, we moved here in March and we applied for social security disability in February. So now we have to appeal that. So we've had that conversation with our attorney. We have officially filed the appeal. Now the appeal process itself, you do have to have a telephone hearing. And she said that it can take months months for them to schedule your telephone hearing. And then once you have the hearing, if they approve your appeal and approve your back pay, it can take another several months for you to get the back pay, which at this point, I'm not surprised. So we're looking at probably another six months if they approve his back pay for us to get any of that back pay. However, he will get his first social security disability payment the third Wednesday of June. So here in just a few weeks, which is really, really exciting because this has been, like I said, a two and a half by the time this is all said and done over three year process. So I'm just grateful that he's getting social security disability payments starting in June. And now we just have to basically fight and wait for the back pay. And the other issue with social security deeming him disabled as of November, besides the fact that that's obviously not the case. Troy has a birth defect. So technically he's been disabled since birth, but he actually had those stents put in his vena cava back in 2018. And that's really when we should have applied for, so for disability for him, but he was still able to work at that point. So he wanted to work if he could work and continue putting his time into the union and building his pension. We are definitely entitled to the back pay. We just have to see if we can get it approved by the attorney. And the other thing is if we don't get any back pay, the attorney doesn't get paid. That's how they get paid is on our back pay. So I'm sure that they're going to be pushing pretty hard for us to get that back pay as well. He will also be able to get his pension from the union. He gets to draw 85% of his pension as a disabled person. So we sent the paperwork off for that. We're just waiting to hear back for on when he'll actually start getting that as well as the amount of that. And it sounds like that's a pretty long process too. That could take a couple of months. And then he's also given back pay from when he applied for social security disability. So February, 2022 to current from the union. The problem is, is that in the letter from social security, since they called Troy disabled as of November of last year, that is all that the union will pay back pay. So we're actually not only missing a big chunk of back pay from social security, now we're missing a big chunk of back pay from his pension, from the union. So they said what they would do is pay us the back pay from November. And then if we appeal this and it goes through, we get another letter from social security showing the February, 2022 date, they'll go back and give us that, that back pay. So right now we have no back pay from anybody. Uh, we haven't even received any payments, but the good news is, is we have the award letter. So it's set in stone, it's done. We will be getting the payments. He will be getting his first payment a little bit later this month. The process, I tell you, they will take your money and you got to pay them right now, but they can take the next two years to figure out how to get you your money that you paid into all of your life working. So it's just the way the system works. It's frustrating, especially for someone like Troy who is getting disability because he has a legitimate disability birth defect. So it's definitely frustrating, but the good news is, but we definitely have, but we have good news. And that's the fact that we are at least going to get social security disability in June. And then hopefully his pension will come shortly after. So again, similar to Lola, I'll keep you guys updated again on when, what we find out from back pay from both social security and the union. And the last update is on Brenda, my old coach. So I decided to file a formal complaint with the attorney general of Texas. Thank you to all of you who suggested that I do that. Hopes to get some resolution, if anything, to get her banned from online coaching other people and stealing other people's money. I filed that complaint. I did hear back from Nicole, the other girl who got scammed from Brenda and her Apple Pay sided with Brenda, similar to how my credit card did. So she, I believe, is going to be filing a attorney general complaint as well. Now I filed the complaint. I got an email saying that they received my complaint and then I've heard absolutely nothing since. So I don't know if it takes a while. I planned on following back up with the attorney general of Texas once I know that Nicole filed a complaint so that I can reference her complaint and say, hey, this is a pattern with this person. So as of right now, I don't really have any update or resolution. 
I'm not getting my money back. I mean, that's pretty much out of the question. I don't think the attorney general is going to give me my money back, but at least if we can prevent her from scamming other people online, then I definitely want to pursue that. Hopefully I get an update on that letter, on that complaint from the attorney general. I should reach back out to Nicole today to see if she was able to file her complaint. We'll just see what happens in the future with that. But I have, you know, been using the Copilot app for quite a while now and really, really love it. I'm actually three and a half months into it. I still use it every workout I do in the gym. So two to three times per week. Love the app. Love my coat. Aileen, I did want to give you an update though on Copilot. I did make a post in my Facebook group, also on Instagram, that Copilot has now rebranded to the name Trainwell. So I'll pop a picture up here of what the app looks like now. If you are interested in testing it out, it's they just updated the name so that because there are so many co-pilot things out there, if you search co-pilot, 50,000 things come up. And gr granted, they were called co-pilot fitness, but by going to the name Trainwell, it just differentiates them a little bit more, easier to find, less search results from AI when you search co-pilot. So it's still the same everything. You still can use my link to get a 14 free truck. You can get a 14 day free trial, talk to a coach, get some workouts, get some nutrition. So your app will automatically update to train well. That's exactly what happened to me. The app looks exactly the same. You still have your same workouts, your same coach, same everything, but it just now says train well instead of co-pilot. So if you haven't downloaded the app and tried it for 14 days, definitely do. It's such an amazing app. It really is. I love everything about it. Unlike Brenda, Kayleen gets back to me right away. She's very, very supportive. She really works with me on my goals. She all she updates my workouts every four to six weeks automatically for me. It's just literally night and day from Brenda and it's so much more affordable. The 14 day free trial is no obligation. So if you don't wanna stay with Trainwell, you don't have to, but at least you can try it out free for 14 days. So I'll have it linked for you and I think I think that's all the updates that I have. I'll continue to update you on everything, keep you guys posted. I have this, these brushes left to clean, so let me drop you down, show you how I clean my brushes. All right, we are nice and clean, I feel very, very accomplished. Again, I will link the Cinema Secrets down below for you. Highly, highly recommend for cleaning your brushes. So easy. So I'm going to have some lunch. It's right around noon. I'm going to refill my water and I'm going to keep it pretty simple for lunch today, kind of protein packed. So I have these little tuna fish packets. I love these. These are so great on the go and they're also just a really quick, easy lunch. This is the Bumblebee Mediterranean Herbs and Spices. So it's 80 calories, but 16 grams of protein. So that's that's amazing. And then I'm going to have it with some of these Simple Mills almond flour crackers. I like this because it's pre-portioned out. So these two together, the crackers are 120 calories. And then I have some cheese. I'm going to have one slice of cheese just for some healthy fat along with a little bit of fat that's in the crackers. All right, so here is my lunch. Actually, this tuna looks really good. There's some olives in there. Looks amazing. Here is the amount of crackers in that pack. So it's a really good amount. And then I have one slice of the Swiss cheese. And like I said, I'm going to refill my water. So I'll put points, calories, macros here on the screen for you. Look at this juicy watermelon. I'm actually going to cut it up. Oh my gosh, it looks so good so that we have fresh watermelon. I always cut it, throw the rinds in a grocery sack and then take it out to the garbage can. So for my afternoon snack today, I'm actually going to have this Oikos Pro 23 grams of protein, a little smoothie. I've actually never had this one. I've had a lot of these yogurt drinks, but this one has 23 grams of protein and 140 calories. So I'm going to have that. And then if you saw my Costco haul, I bought these Tossie bars. These are absolutely delicious. There's almond blueberry, coconut cashew, and peanut dark chocolate. It says high protein, low sugar. It's not high in protein. They're about 110 to 140 calories a piece, and they have like five or six grams. Not bad. Actually, let me show you what they look like. 
So here's the size of them. So, I mean, they're pretty good size. They're like a standard granola bar, but like I said, I wouldn't call them high protein, but they do have a decent amount of protein, nice clean ingredients. They're organic, gluten-free, they have fiber. So I'm going to have, I think I'll do the coconut, cashew, and the Oikos smoothie. So that's going to be my afternoon snack. For dinner tonight, I'm making Copycat Panda Express Mushroom Chicken. This is one of my favorite dishes from Panda Express. And I asked Troy if he wanted white rice or Trader Joe's fried rice. He opted for fried rice. So let me show you what's in the Copycat Panda Express Mushroom Chicken recipe. You're going to need brown sugar, brown sugar alternative, ginger or ginger paste, cornstarch, minced garlic, soy sauce, rice wine, vinegar, sesame oil, and oyster sauce. Of course, some chicken, a zucchini, and some mushrooms. And then, like I said, he wanted the fried rice. I only have the chicken fried rice. It'll be fine. I'm probably not going to have any, honestly. I'm just going to have the mushroom chicken. So you could do regular rice, cauliflower rice, whatever your preference. So the first thing we're going to do is make up the marinade. So I sliced up my chicken into thin strips. Go ahead and add that to a medium bowl. And we're going to add two tablespoons of cornstarch. Two tablespoons of soy sauce. One tablespoon of sesame oil. And a tablespoon of rice vinegar. And then we're going to mix this up really well. I'm going to allow it to sit and marinate for about 20 to 30 minutes. You can also make this the night before and stick it in the fridge overnight. While the chicken's marinating, we're going to go ahead and make up the sauce. So I added half of a cup of water to a bowl, and then I'm adding a quarter cup of soy sauce, one tablespoon of cornstarch, two tablespoons of oyster sauce, one tablespoon of rice vinegar. Mix that all together until fully combined. You wanna make sure that cornstarch gets mixed in really well. And then we're going to set this aside. So I have the chicken fried rice going on the back burner here. I have a large skillet warmed up with some nonstick cooking spray. We're going to go ahead and add in that marinated chicken. I spread that out nice and even in the bottom of my skillet in a single layer. And we're going to allow it to cook completely through. I'll just flip it over periodically with my fork. Amazing this chicken looks, it smells so good. It is just about done. I am going to remove it from the skillet onto a plate and we'll add in the veggies. Now we're going to add in our zucchini. I slice it into little half circles. And then the mushrooms. And we're going to allow these to cook for about three to four minutes. We just want to get them soft. Then we're going to add back in our chicken. Mix that in with the veggies. Just let that warm through, just another minute or so. And lastly, we're adding in that sauce and stirring it just to make sure the cornstarch is still mixed in really well. We're going to add that and again, reduce the heat to medium until the sauce thickens. So here is the mushroom chicken. This looks so good. I'm allowing it to thicken up just a little bit more. And then the Trader Joe's chicken fried rice really is the best easiest fried rice. So here's Troy's. He did the mushroom chicken on the bottom, topped it with the fried rice from Trader Joe's. And then this is mine. I just did the Panda Express mushroom chicken. It's my favorite dish at Panda, so I'm so excited to try this to see if it compares. I'll put up here on the screen what I think and points, calories, and macros. For dessert, I'm making a yogurt bowl. No surprise to anybody. So let me show you what I'm having with my bowl. I'm doing the Chobani Zero Sugar Yogurt in Strawberry Cheesecake. I would say this is probably my favorite yogurt. And then I like the Too Good and I like the Light and Fit. And I am going to add some strawberries since it's strawberry cheesecake yogurt. And then I'm going to add one tablespoon of lemon curd. I've been trying to use this up. I bought this at a little town kind of about 20 minutes or so from my house called Tubac. It's like this little Mexican town. And it's been in my fridge and I've been trying to use it up. You can see I've made a pretty good dent. It's so lemony and so good. One tablespoon is 40 calories, but there is a decent amount of sugar in here. It's a curd. So I'm going to do one tablespoon on top and then I'm going to do a quarter cup of Catalina Crunch Honey Nut pairings and that's 75 calories and will give me almost six grams of protein. So this is going to be just under 20 grams, which is a perfect dessert. So let me go ahead and put my yogurt bowl together and I'll show you what it looks like. Give me all your reasons to why I should take my time. Used to have forever, but you never cared that much. Just tell me why. 
for joining me for today's What I Eat in a Day. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me today, seeing all the good food that I ate. Everything I shared with you today will be linked in the description box. Tonight's dinner recipe is on my recipe website. I will also put that at the very top of the description box for you. And if you enjoyed the What I Eat in a Day, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, turn your bell on. We do one of these every Wednesday and I actually upload five videos every single week. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing rest of your week and I will see you in Friday's weigh-in.